the backdrop for our meeting today uh, was the horrifying images of the attacks committed by the Russian army against civilians in Ukraine. We are all appalled and we stand ready to step up sanctions and support for the people of Ukraine. It is now so important that we maintain the unity that has characterised our response up to this point and that is why tomorrow we will discuss further actions at EU 27 level when we meet as members of ECOFIN. So today at the Eurogroup we focused on the consequences that the war has on the Euro area economy. We can see this clearly in energy and increasingly in food prices and in the disruption of our supply chains. And of course, what this does for governments, for citizens, for businesses, it creates uncertainty. What we acknowledged is that economic growth will slow down this year. But let me emphasise two points. Firstly, it is because of the risk of uncertainty that the Eurogroup has made clear the need for our budgetary policy to be agile and to respond back to changing developments. Secondly, we entered in to this latest economic crisis with a strong recovery taking place within the euro area. So this means for many, many economies we are still looking at positive growth figures for 2022. But we appreciate the impact this war is having on so many within the European Union in terms of the increases in energy prices and what that is now meaning for standards of living. We recognise that these increases are having an impact on our society and our cost of living, both in the short term and indeed in the longer term. Though, of course, we place those consequences in the context of the consequences of violence and of war. So finance ministers today fully recognised this challenge in our discussion. And at the same time, we have highlighted the numerous policies that are in place to soften these impacts, particularly for the most vulnerable. In the medium term, our transition to other energy sources will happen much faster than we originally thought, which emphasises yet again the pressing need to foster investment in both the public and private sector. In other areas, such as food and raw materials, the war has led to price increases and the spike in prices of commodities on our world markets is currently generating inflation in the euro area. However, as of yet, neither the Commission nor the ECB have detected signs of these prices feeding in to an inflationary spiral in the euro area as wages, if wages and other factors in our economy were to respond back to those price increases. But this is something that we will be monitoring very, very closely. Overall, the Eurogroup acknowledged the significant costs to standing against the abhorrent actions that are now being inflicted on the people of Ukraine. We recognise the strength of the euro area to absorb these costs in terms of the supports being provided by states to their citizens and also the role that EU citizens are playing in incurring a share of these costs so that we all in turn can assist the Ukraine and their most impacted citizens. This discussion again today emphasise the value of building on the unity and coordinated action that we developed in response to the pandemic in order 
to effectively tackle the consequences of this war and maintain cohesion within the euro area. Our next discussion today was a very constructive exchange of views on the digital euro, in particular on issues related to privacy and other policy objectives such as anti-money laundering. The ECB presented its recent work to us, including options on how to build in appropriate privacy safeguards. The Eurogroup agreed that the design of a digital euro should accommodate privacy concerns while complying with the broader policy objectives and counteracting the use of digital euros for unwarranted purposes. Going beyond this, a risk-based approach could be followed to allow for more privacy in the case of less risky and smaller transactions and vice versa. I also today heard some support to explore offline functionality limited to low value payments in close proximity. This could improve the financial inclusion objective of the digital euro and of its convenience, potentially enhancing its overall success. And we encourage the ECB and the Commission to continue with their work in this area. We'll be discussing the digital euro again in June. At this point, it will be in connection with financial stability issues. A third agenda item was on the housing market developments and on policy implications. It's the first time we've discussed this issue in Eurogroup format, and it's part of our series of thematic discussions on issues in the Euro area that are relevant to our work as finance ministers. The picture today was varied. In many, many uh, economies, the issue of affordability was raised with all of the knock-on effects this has on our citizens. We had a good discussion today on these issues and challenges based on uh, good input from the Commission and we share today the different measures that are being taken at national level to respond back to these challenges while also recognising that the national specifics of housing markets vary a lot. It was also my pleasure today to welcome our new Portuguese colleague, Fernando Medina, to the Eurogroup meeting. Finally, together with our colleagues from Croatia and Bulgaria, we invited the Chair of the Supervisory Board of the ECB and the Chair of the Single Resolution Board for the regular update on their recent activities and their assessment of the challenges facing the financial sector. They touched upon important topics such as the state of our banking system in the current geopolitical context and the recent resolution cases. And these discussions showed that efforts to reduce risk in our banking systems are paying off, despite many challenges, and that the resilience of our banks at the moment has become an asset to our economies as we respond back to a new test. So I also took the opportunity to announce that I will be holding an extra Eurogroup meeting in inclusive format in early May. This will be to discuss my proposal for a work plan on banking union. We need a strong banking union in place to improve our competitiveness, to strengthen our role in the world, to fund the transition to a greener and more digital economy and to improve our resilience, our stability and to strengthen our efforts to protect taxpayers and to protect depositors. And I look forward to working with all members of the Eurogroup in anticipation of that meeting to make progress in that working plan in the time afterwards. Paolo, over to you. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Pascal. 